again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with a continuation of the Cloister Shell Market Bag. Thank you so much for joining me today, and thank you, Lion Brand, for sponsoring this video. All right, so let us hop in where we left off. Last video, we ended on round seven, and it is important that we did such because, if you'll notice, in the very center of each side, is a grouping of three double crochets. And that is going to help facilitate us on the decrease that we need to do in the middle, while also still being able to do the increase at the corners. That way, while we have the increasing and the decreasing going on simultaneously, it will create a bit of a valley in the center of each side, while also maintaining the peaks and create a circumference for our bag. Now, that being said, you can technically make this bag bigger. However, you would need to follow the cloister shell repeat and get to this point again where you have a grouping of three in the center, which means that these two arches here would need to be filled with seven double crochets each, and then three on top. And eventually you would get to this point once again. However, it would be a lot bigger than what it currently is. And for this size, I would say it's a market bag. The next size up, if you follow the sequence of the pattern, it would be more like a laundry bag. It would be rather large and quite tremendous for our purposes. So I just wanted to put it out there that it is possible, although it may be a little bit more than you bargained for, just putting it out there. At any rate, without further, you know, yammer yammering on my part, let's get started. Round eight. So for the rest of the bag, for the most part, it's going to be a repeat of rounds eight and round nine, ending on a round eight, if you will. And so we're going to start by chaining up three, and then doing seven double crochets into our chain three space, just as we have been. That's two, three, four, five, six, and this should be seven. Yep, I. I can't help it, I like to double count. It's just part of my genetic makeup. Okay, so from here, chain one, double crochet into the center, double crochet down below. Chain one. Now, ordinarily, we would be doing, as previously, seven double crochets in here and seven in here. However, we need to decrease. And it's going to total seven double crochets, just like we have down here, but they're going to be sort of smushed together. So you'll see what I mean. So into this chain three space, just three doubles. and then skipping right along, no chain in between, doing a double crochet into the center double crochet here. And then three doubles into this chain three space. So Got my three doubles over here. And then, yes, so we have a total of seven double crochets, because we've got the three, the three, and the one in the middle. 
and then in the following round we'll be able to do three double crochets right in the middle. It works out um, <laughs> and you'll see as we proceed. So from here, chain one, one double crochet in the center, chain one, and then we're going to do our corners just as we have been, seven doubles, one in the spine, and then seven doubles. So the corners have not changed one bit. It's just the sides. So we've got three, four, five, six, and seven. Yes. Good. Okay. Then double crochet into the double. And then seven double crochets into this chain three space. Okay, that's three, four, five, six, and seven. Yes? Yes, good. Okay. So, scooting right along, we're going to do another side together. So, chain one, double crochet into the middle, double crochet, chain one, into the chain three space, three doubles, double crochet into the center, double crochet, and three doubles into the next chain three space. Okay, chain one, double crochet into that center, double crochet, chain one, and then we have our corners once again. So that's seven doubles, double into the spine, seven doubles. Bit more yarn here. So I've got two, three, four, five, six, and seven double crochet into the double crochet. Got an extra ply there. There we go. And then seven doubles into the next chain three space. Okay, that's three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so from here, following what we have been doing, so from here you would chain one, double crochet in the second double, chain one, three doubles, one in the middle, three doubles, chain one, one in the middle, chain one, seven doubles, one double, seven doubles, and so forth. 
and then scooting along this side, doing the same thing, finishing up with seven doubles in this chain three space, and then a slip stitch to the top of this third chain to complete round eight, okay? And so I'm gonna do the rest of this round off camera, and of course, you will notice that your piece will start to sort of cinch and buckle along the sides. That is normal, that is what you want, because that is going to create the cylindrical shape of your bag, and you will see it more and more pronounced as we keep going. So, I'm gonna finish this round, and I will see you momentarily. Round nine, okay, so round eight was what I would refer to as a, a fan or a, a shell round. This one is going to be an arch round. So start off by chaining up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then double crochet into the base of that first double crochet to create our first arch. There we go, just like we have been previously. Then from here, chain one, skipping two doubles, going into the next three with double crochets. So, so far, nothing has changed, but it soon will, so. All right, then from here, chain one, and into the top of this double crochet, double, chain three, double. Double, one, two, three, and double. chain one. Okay, then going to do a double crochet into these middle three. So it's the, the third of these three, this middle solitary one, and then the first of these three. So skip, skip, and double, and double into the next two. And there you go. Okay, from here, chain one, and then creating another arch in the top of this double right here. So scooting over, doing a double chain three double in the top of this stitch. There we go, chain one, skipping the first two doubles, double crochet into the next three. Chain one, skipping two doubles, and then into that third one, the spine, double, chain three, double, chain three, and double. Okay, let's do another side together. I figure doing all four sides, considering they're all the same, can be perhaps a bit redundant, so I'm just doing two out of the four. So let's chain one. And of course, you could always refer back, and the timestamps are always in the description box down below. So we did our double arch for the corner. So skip two doubles, 
double into the next three. Chain one, create an arch on top of this double, so that's double, chain three, double. Chain one, skipping to these center three. So skipping those first two doubles, going into that last of the three, then the solitary double, and then the first of the three. So we've got our grouping of three right there. Chain one. Skipping ahead to the next solitary double, create a new arch. So that's double, chain three, double. Chain one, skip two doubles, double into the next three. Chain one, skip two doubles into the spine, double, chain three, double, chain three, more yarn. Thank you. Okay, so I got my chain one. Double, chain three, double, chain three, and double. Hold into that same stitch for the, the spine there on the corner. And then you would continue on in the same fashion by chaining one, skipping two, double into the next three, and so forth, just like we did for the previous two sides of our square. All right, and so keep following suit. So from here, you would chain one, create a new arch of a double, chain three, double, chain one, double into these middle three here, chain one, new arch here by double, chain three, double, chain one, skip two, double in the next three, chain one, into the corner, double, chain three, double, chain three, double, and so on and so forth until you have reached the end of this round. So around here, uh, after doing your arch here, which is a double, chain three, double, you would chain one, skip two, double in the next three, chain one, and then like we had done in the previous video, uh, you would in the base of this double crochet, after doing your three doubles, you would chain one, double down here, chain three, and slip stitch to the third chain from the bottom. Actually, you know what, just, just because um, it sounds a bit complicated, you know, perhaps more than I would like, I will meet back up with you around here, okay? I will be right back. Okay, so I'm almost done with round nine. Just wanted to touch base. So I did my arch in this double crochet down here. So now chain one and skipping two doubles, double into the next three. Yeah, the ending for 
this round is perhaps a little bit more tricky than the last one, so that's why I'm I'm back. <laughs> All right, so from here, chain one, and then, like I said, into the base of this double crochet, need to do a double crochet. It can be a little bit fiddly, but yep, it is worth it like most fiddly things. There we go. So double crochet and then chain three and slip stitch into the third chain from the bottom. Okay, there you go. And so that is the end of round nine. Like I said, this is an arch round. Previous round and the next round are gonna be shell rounds or fan rounds. And so it's really just a matter of continuing to repeat rounds eight and nine. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick recap of round eight for you. And so I'm gonna start off by chaining up three, and then seven doubles into the chain three space. So that's two. three, four, five, six, and seven. Chain one, double crochet into the center, double crochet. and get out this little bit of a tangle. Thank you. Okay, chain one. Three doubles into the arch. Double crochet into the center, double crochet. Three doubles into the next arch. Chain one. One double in the center of the three. Chain one. And then we reached the corner arches. So it's seven doubles, double in the spine, and then seven doubles. So that is just a, like I said, a quick recap of round eight. But for the rest of this project, for the, the body of the bag, it is a matter of repeating rounds eight and nine ending on around eight because it is more solid and honestly I think it looks better um, than ending on a round nine and then I will show you how you can create the handles which you do not have to sew on which is an extra bonus they are built right in and we're gonna be utilizing single crochet stitches for those. Now, as far as the, the height of the bag, that is, of course, totally up to you. You know, if you want a, a very deep bag, that, that's up to you. Now, what I have found works, if you are using this yarn specifically, okay, and you only wanna use one of the the cakes, one of the skeins, is 
I will show you. All right, starting in the very, very base here, okay? Counting these shells, these arches, uh, sorry, uh, shells or fans, excuse me. What you want to do is keep repeating rounds eight and nine until you have a total of nine of these fans, starting with this one in the very, very center of the base. So it'd be one, two, three, four, and this would be this would make five. So after doing this fan, this shell here, I would need an additional four more, and then ending with this as our finished edge for when we're about to start the, the handles. I'll show you what I mean. See, this is where I ended. Honestly, I think this looks a lot nicer than if you ended with just sort of the bare bones of the arch space, okay? So, and you know what, let me, let me show you what I mean. Okay, so you can see here, this is the base of the bag. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay. And was able to do a nice wide handle. And I only needed the one skein of yarn. It's a beautiful thing. All right, so keep on keeping on. Repeat rounds eight and nine until you have at least nine of these fans, okay? Refer back to the timestamps if necessary. Nothing wrong with that. And I will meet back up with you so that we can do the handles together. I'll see you in a bit. Hello again, my dears. Alrighty, so after doing a whole bunch of crocheting off camera, I have nine of these shell rounds. Again, starting from the very, very base, working our way up. And as I said before, yes, you can make this bag taller if you so choose, but this worked for me as far as the yardage, getting the entire bag done with just the one cake. So from here, we are going to do sort of a, a foundation round for what we're going to do is the, the finishing of the bag. So first things first, going to chain up one and single crochet into that same spine stitch. There we are. And then for the entire round, just single crochet. This is going to stabilize the top edge for our project. <clears throat> now, every time you have a double crochet stitch, yeah, just do a single crochet stitch into the stitch. Whenever you reach a chain stitch, that counts as one stitch, so you would do a single crochet into that. It's really, really quite simple. So as you can see, we are already there. So just do a single crochet into the chain space, and then a single into this double, and then a single into this chain space, just going all the way around the entire top of the bag. And when we have come full circle, we will do our single crochets into these stitches. And then what you can quite conceivably do is a slip stitch into this first single crochet that we did. And then the magic happens. We can then start in on the handles. All right, so I'm gonna finish this round off camera and I will be back in a jiffy. Okay, so I'm almost done with the round of single crochets. I just got three more to go, and then we'll do our slip stitch. There we go, so it's one, two, 
and three, and then slip stitch into that first single crochet. It's not completely obligatory, but I think it looks a little bit nicer. Okay, so we have our round of single crochets, and yes, it's going to give this top edge of the bag just a little bit more stability. So right now, we are going to do a massive chain, and we're going to jump from this post here, this center one, to the other side, and just one big chain. Now, as far as the, the length of the chain, that is, of course, up to you. Personally, I have found that 50 chains works out rather nicely, creates a, a decent length handle, and also it can go over the shoulder. At least it can go over my shoulder. So I'm going to do 50 chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, and 50. Okay, now from here, being careful not to twist your chain, it's very important, going to go directly into the single crochet right above our post there. Now, it does not have to be exact by any means, but I think that it makes it look rather nice and polished if you hit it dead center. And just single crochet into that stitch, okay? And then going to single crochet our way across to the next corner. And then we can create our second handle. It's all about the symmetry. And we are almost there as it is. So, you know, let's let's keep going, shall we? Okie dokie. And actually, this style of creating handles, I've done on bags before, and it is one of my preferred methods because that way you're not creating separate pieces, having to sew them on, which, seriously, it can be a bit of a pain. And so this, this is my preferred method, whether it is a, a tote bag or a, a messenger bag, really whatever kind of bag. It's just, to me, it's a lot easier, and it's seamless. Okay, so we are approaching our point. We're getting there. Okay, and there we go. Alrighty, so from here, going to chain another 50 and then in the same way, join it to this point here. So, yeah, let, let's do that now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Okay, so then, scooting from this point across to this point on the other side here. Again, being careful not to twist your chain. And then single crochet into that stitch. And then continue on by doing a single, single crochet into each stitch until you eventually will reach the first handle that we created. And then comes the fun part. And I'm saying that with a modicum of sarcasm because I'm not a huge fan of working into chain stitches, but it is a lot neater than if you just work into the chain space because then all of your stitches will be wibbly wobbly timey wimey and not anchored to anything. So that is what we're going to do. So yeah, we're almost there. Yeah, and actually doing those stitches. Yeah, I'm gonna do those off camera for the most part because yes, it is a bit more labor intensive and fiddly, but, 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 but it is very much worth doing right. Okay, just a few more to go. And get into there. Yes. Thank you. No. Thank you. Okay, so from here, going into each chain with a single crochet stitch. Now, what I would suggest is instead of going underneath just the, the top loop of the V, go and capture the top loop as well as the, the middle loop as well, so that you got two loops there that you're capturing like that. and it makes it a little bit more substantial. So I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to do all of these one at a time, but it is totally, totally worth it. So I'm going to do the rest of these off camera, and I will See you in a bit. Yes, I'm going to go all the way around, and uh, I'll see you when I get there. All right. All righty, so I finished an entire round. I did all of these chains, as well as the other handle as well. And right now, you are on easy street for the rest of the project. All you need to do is single crochet into each and every stitch 
all the way around until your handles are wide enough or you run out of yarn, whichever one comes first. And you know, I, I designed this specifically so that you would only need the one skein. But of course, you know, you can make your bag bigger or smaller, whichever the case may be. But I found that this works out very nicely for a, a market bag. As far as lining the bag, I have no experience when it comes to sewing projects of that sort, so I can't advise you on that, I'm afraid. But I think that this makes a, a lovely bag with a little bit more flair than the, the typical sort of fishnet design. You know, it's a little bit more fanciful. I like it. And I hope that you all like it as well. Um, now, as far as a reference for the existing bag, it was a total of seven rounds as far as the width goes. Um, it worked out for me. And considering that I have this much yarn left over, I don't think I'll have any problem duplicating the result. So there you go. The Cloister Shell Market Bag. I really hope that you enjoyed today's tutorial. You know I love teaching. And uh, so I want to thank you for joining me today. And if you did like this video, give a little thumbs up button down below. You know that I appreciate your appreciation as always. And also a big thank you to Lion Brand for sponsoring this video. Of course, there will be a link in the description box where you can find this yarn. And uh, well, you know what to do until next time, right? I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now, everybody, and have a great day. Thank you.